Welcome back, guys, to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We have our first major conversation up next. Uh, and let's quickly remind you that there have been several significant and landmark and even epoch uh, judgments, you know, that were issued by various courts across the country, uh, that's Nigeria, in the course of the year uh, 2022, from judgments on contempt of court by high-profile persons to rulings on many cases of national importance the year 2022 was eventful for the Nigerian judiciary. Now, let's look at some of the outstanding or standout rather judgments and landmark cases. Uh, the first one we have here, INEC versus political parties. Well, if you remember, in March, Nigeria's Supreme Court upheld the deregistration of 22 political parties by the Independent National Electoral Commission, uh, that's uh, INEC. Another one, uh, if you remember, uh, the... Uh, uh, David Umahi, rather, uh, governor of Eboyi State, was sacked uh, from office as governor of Eboyi State. And this was one of the least suspected uh, judgments by the courts. Uh, Iyang Eko, me Lord, the Honorable Justice Iyang Eko of uh, an Abuja, uh, the Abuja Federal High Court on March 8, ordered the removal of David Umahi and his uh, deputy, Eric Kelechi Igwe, um, following their defection from the People's Democratic Party uh, to the All Progressives Congress uh, ruling party uh, at the center. Another one is the case of Amechi versus River State. If you remember, on May 27, the Supreme Court dismissed an appeal uh, by Rotibi Amechi, former governor of River State and former minister of transportation, uh, seeking to stop a uh, probe into an alleged uh, 96 billion naira fraud. Although the River State government had preferred criminal charges against Amici after the Supreme Court verdict. Uh, the suit was withdrawn in October. October. Uh, probably vindicated Amici in his uh, uh, case, uh, who said he you know, had no case to answer. Um, another one is a case of hijab in schools. Um, this was a very, very uh, um, public you know, case that was widely followed. Uh, in October 2014, if you remember, go down memory lane, uh, a Lagos... High Court ruled against the wearing of hijab in schools, a decision that was uh, overturned by an appellate court in July 2016. However, a judgment on June 17, uh, in a judgment on June 17, 2022, uh, five of a seven-man panel of uh, Supreme Court judges held that banning the use of hijab in Lagos schools, schools in Lagos State, is discriminatory. And uh, I'm sure you, you remember one of the lawyers who went to court in his uh, traditional outfit uh, in protest at this. Well, we have both significant, you know, and landmark judgments to mention, but let's at this point welcome our guests as we look at the significance of uh, these uh, judgments. Indeed, Emeka Opara is a lawyer. He joins us via phone. Uh, in Lagos. Uh, Ms. Opar, good morning to you and thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Uh, in, in a sentence or two, can you uh, give us your thoughts, your summary of the uh, performance of, of the judiciary, um, Nigeria's judiciary in the year 2022? Well, I, I would say the judiciary has, been, um, has performed uh, fairly well. Uh, there are still issues with the judiciary, just like with every other aspect of the department of our government. But uh, I would uh, score the judiciary slightly above the other department. So um, it's uh, some, it's winsome and winsome. Uh, definitely everyone will not be satisfied with every of the judgments. But um, there are some of the judgments I would say that uh, the Supreme Court needs to uh, take a look at, uh, even if in subsequent cases. Okay, Emeka, let's also, I mean, have further conversation. We know that they say uh, judiciary is a, uh, a hope of the common man. So 
uh, in 2022, there are some judgments that were really outstanding, and we have highlighted some of them. Which of these judgments would you say uh, actually upheld that principle and phrase, hope of a common man? Would you say is uh, the judgment where INEC and political parties, where the Supreme Court upheld the deregistration of 22 political parties by uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission, uh, amongst others, failed to meet the criteria of Section 225, subsection A of the 1999 Constitution, or uh, the court sacking Umaye as governor, uh, or the, the Amechi and River State, or the hijab in schools, or Peter and Wabuchi convicted as fraud. Which of them would you say upheld the principle or that statement that the judiciary is a hope of a common man? Um, I think I will speak. I make and the political parties that we are really in, uh, registered uh, on top. Um, uh, I, I believe that that particular judgment satisfied both the constitution, the laws of the land, and also the expectation of every reasonable and informed Nigeria. Uh, definitely, we know that it's not everyone that is reasonable and informed. That every reasonable and informed person should know that that particular judge uh, takes the top among all good judgments of the Supreme Court in the year 2022. Because it satisfied all the necessary criteria. And it will satisfy also the yearning of, of the general public for a better democratic dispensation. Um, but there are some judgments among them that uh, I don't know if you permit me. Go ahead. Uh, that are controversial. Okay. Can I continue? Yes, go ahead. You, you, you have, you know. Uh, the time. Go ahead. Yes. Um, I, I would think among them the hijab judgment. Um, one thing about a, a judgment is that it should be acceptable to the community it is uh, and that they may not necessarily agree so much with it, but they should not come with the impression, or rather it should not leave them with the impression that something extrajudicial we are taking into consideration in arriving at the judgment. Um, I, I would want to leave it at that. The hijab judgment doesn't seem to be a purely judicial judgment. Um, and it should be looked at again. The judgment um, in Amnesty and River case uh, will also satisfy. I believe I it believe should uh, be rank among those that uh, should end the storm of storm up for the Supreme Court. The reason being that whoever occupies the public office should not be beyond probe, or rather the government should not be beyond probe by any subsequent government. The motive is immaterial. If along the line, certain unconstitutional methods are employed in probing him or her, then the person can go to court. But to go to court and obtain uh, uh, an injunction to present a look into his or her activities while in government should not be permitted. And I think the Supreme Court rose up to that expectation in that judgment. Um, Devo Mahi, um, um, against, uh, well, the, the, the judgment on Devo Mahi 
uh, I believe that in my own view, it should not be the, the right thing because uh, uh, political halotry, if I may use that language, uh, is something that has been a bend of our, for this, uh, our democratic dispensation since 1999. And when an elected official is elected on a, the platform of a political party, it should be the reasonable thing and the honorable thing and the constitutional thing to resign if he decides that that particular political party is no longer good for him. And when he takes the benefit that is meant for both himself and the political party to another political party, we should not encourage it. And the judiciary should not be part of encouraging it. And I think the Constitution itself is very clear on it. So that judgment, to my mind, is unsatisfactory. That is all I will say concerning right. some of our... Uh, okay. Uh, uh, some of, uh, yeah, it's a very interesting analysis from you. Um, when we look at the uh, David Wahey case and the cases of other governors who, you know, uh, crossed the carpet from one party, political party, to another... Um, I mean, you you said the judiciary has performed well, though I think somewhere in there you said there's a room for some improvement. Uh, in in the Umahi case, there were um, conflicting judgments by courts of equal jurisdiction at the same time, and it was becoming confusing, you know, to know uh, which one was which and which one should be obeyed. Um, uh, this is some of the challenges that we noticed in the year 2022, as far as uh, courts, the courts were concerned in, are concerned in Nigeria. What are your thoughts on this, and what needs to be done to make sure that we don't have conflicting judgments on the same matter uh, by courts of equal, equal court jurisdiction in 2023? Well, um, conflicting judgments are something we one cannot completely do away with, so long as we have different courts of the same hierarchy. Um, the way it happened, the, the pointer should be to appeal. So when we go on appeal, and ultimately it gets either to the Court of Appeal or to the Supreme Court, that particular problem will no longer be there. Uh, and that is the thing. So if we have competing judgment, simply because people have the the right to go to different uh, courts of the same jurisdiction or, the, or rather of, of coordinate jurisdiction uh, ultimately there will be a convergence on appeal with respect as to what particular uh, uh, judgment to be followed ultimately when you get to the, to the court of appeal or the Supreme court that particular issue will no longer be there again because there will be one judgment. Let's, let's delve into the issue of contempt. Now, and also in 2022, there are several judgments about contempt. Uh, if you follow vividly, uh, Bauer, uh, the EFCC chairman or boss, if you like to say, uh, had, there was a con judgment sentencing him to prison for contempt. The IGP was also sentenced to prison for a series of uh, contempt as well. And uh, the army chief sentenced to prison. I'd like to share your thoughts on this issue of contempt and court judgment and you know what we should anticipate in 2023 because these issues are very sensitive. These are persons who should you know uphold the law, respect the democratic tenets of every, I mean of course of Nigeria at this point, but you know all of this contempt, three of them in 2022, what are your thoughts really? Uh, first of all, I would commend the judiciary and especially the judges and justices involved uh, in those content decisions for displaying courage, which is expected of them. The thing is that when a judgment is given or an order of court is made, it ought to be obeyed. 
and no one should, however highly placed, stay somewhere and say, I'm not going to obey him. Now, uh, we should have more of this. But the problem is making sure that we accept those content decisions. And that is where the problem is. Usually, the content procedure is that you serve personally. You serve the, uh, the content of 48, that is the one that initiates the content proceeding. You serve it personally on the person it is directed to. Uh, but the problem here is that usually when officials, let's say the IG, IG or the EFC chairman is involved in situations like that, there are a cordon of lower officials that prevent the server of the process from serving them personally. So I think the judiciary needs to look at this and the, the, um, the legislature, legislature needs, needs to look at this and really um, make some amendments to our procedure laws to prevent such things from happening. Because the effect is that such officials accept decisions. They accept <laughs> have been proven to be contemptors or their actions proven to be contemptors of the court. So that, that's where we need to really work on. And that would be more courage to the judiciary bring to order the disobedience that is so perverse disobedience court order that is so pervasive in the society. Because most judges are very reluctant to use that particular tool because they know that ultimately it might be in them. And no court will want to make an order or give a judgment that will ultimately be in them. So we need to work at the effectiveness of such judgment. That is to make sure that they, there is proper execution of judgments of the court. And, and that, of course, brings us to issue of impunity in this country. Anyway. All right. Uh, talking about impunity, um, um, uh, let it, sir. Let's look at uh, some of the cases that, uh, or one case that highlights this, um, and we take your thoughts on how, you know, we can avoid something like this in 2023. And that's the case of um, the leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra group, Namdi Kano, who uh, was set free by an appeal court. Um, he's been arraigned on terrorism charges, you know, and uh, of course he's been uh, there for some time. The appeal court quashed, you know, the, the charges on the 13th of October, but as we speak, he's still in court. We know the federal government has appealed the judgment, but some of uh, your colleagues in the uh, legal profession think that he should have been set free while the appeal was going on. Uh, do you consider this case an example of um, uh, uh, some of the, the what you just talked about uh, and how can we overcome uh, this, this, this issue of um, impunity and lack of disobedience to court judgments by government in 2023? That is a serious issue, if I may say. Um, it has become more worrisome in the past few years, especially in the past seven years, the issue of impunity. It did not start with this particular administration, but uh, it's become more pervert. And we need to really have a serious look at it. Now, uh, the Imam de Kano case is a case that is so clear that the judiciary ultimately has done its job up to the Court of Appeal. And if you remember very well, the federal government was saying that the 
decision lay with the court. And uh, the court has now made a decision. And what we discover is that it is now politics and not the court. And the important thing also the judiciary has to uh, bear in mind is that the executive may spend it seriously with uh, the politics in this case. I had expected that by now, the Supreme Court would short circuit the proceedings in that appeal to it. Because elongating it or waiting for it to take its, uh, its place in the long line of cases would mean indirectly making a person who has not been convicted to serve a sentence. That is the, the problem. So the Supreme Court needs to seriously substitute whatever procedure on that case and hear it and decide it finally. All right. All right. Uh, uh, Power, thank you so much for your time. I think we can both agree that the last major case for the year 2023 would have, would be 2022, rather, would be uh, uh, the uh, prosecution and um, of uh, uh, Don Yokupe, and he was found guilty by a court. That was the biggest one that uh, we're using to end the year. Uh, Emeka Power, thank you very much for your time. It's uh, been a great thank one having you. you. Thank you. And wish you uh, a, a you. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in advance. Thanks. I wish you right, right. Mess you are you afforded a chuckle when they said it's what <laughs> we used to end the year <laughs> with the Dow Cooper case. I mean Hey, um, there's a way you you know, it's always been said <laughs> you know, in uh, the local language uh, way back it sounds yeah. so when I remember that it just made me laugh. <laughs> Well, or chuckle. However, that's the size of it this morning on FS Major Conversation. We'll take a break and when we ret return uh, for the second leg, we'll be talking sports this morning with Monday Thomas, all things equal. Please stay with us.